All right, folks, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the USS Silverside Submarine Museum. My name is Wes O'Donnell, and I am the director of this Michigan treasure, the Silversides. And let me tell you, I have the best job in the world. You see, I served in the US Army Infantry in the 101st Airborne Division. And later I served in the US Air Force for a grand total of 10 years on active duty. And I get to come to work every day and honor our nation's heroes. Those men and women who have sacrificed for the very ideals that make this country so amazing. I want to turn over to Neil right now, Neil Mullally, one of our greatest contributors here at the museum, who's going to introduce our speaker for tonight. Neil, it's all yours. Hey, good evening, everyone. What was that? Okay, all right, now here, here's the deal, okay? The louder the response, the shorter I talk, and you get to see the program, okay? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All, right. all right, okay. <laughs> I won't be up here very long then, I guess. So. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. I've been helping Wes uh, organize the, uh, this fall lecture series that we have, and I just wanted to talk about them a little bit. You know, last year we had a very significant uh, Vietnam War uh, um, program, and many of you uh, here were there, and that success led us to think about more and more having uh, not only World War II type of lectures, but also uh, Vietnam era uh, lectures. And so tonight is the first of two that we're having this fall. You'll soon meet John Cologne, but I wanted to mention next week on Monday night, we are having uh, another Vietnam era lecture, and uh, that is uh, uh, about what's called Firebase Ripcord. And uh, I didn't realize this, but uh, how, how, many, how many names are on the Vietnam Wall? About over 50,000, right? Now, let me ask you this. We were in Vietnam. I didn't know this until I researched this. I'm, I'm not a Vietnam veteran myself. Of the 20 years that we were in Vietnam, uh, when did we lose most of the people? Right right around that time, but the, it's, it's a, it, I, I couldn't believe it. Of the 20 years we were in Vietnam and those 50,000 names that are on the wall, 40,000 were lost in the two-year period of 1967 to 69. 40,000 in the two years of the 50,000 when we were there for 20 years. So Firebase Ripcord uh, was a battle. It was classified until not many years ago. The, the, the casualty rate was so horrendous, not only there but other areas up by the northern border of Vietnam that the Pentagon and, and the uh, bigwigs kept, kept this all classified and only recently have uh, these um, uh, records and, and the battle become uh, known to the public. And we are having next Monday, in fact he's a good friend of uh, John Cologne and and Joe Byerly is here, we're having Bruce Whipple come, who is a survivor of Firebase Ripcord. Not only that, Bruce Whipple has the equivalent of, you know our truck out here, the, the, uh, the Deuce, he has the equivalent of a trailer that size, and it is filled with artifacts from Vietnam, uh, his entire unit records, and he is going to set up here what an encampment at Firebase Ripcord uh, was like. Uh, incredible, I, I've seen it, uh, had been fortunate to see it. And if you ever have any young people, if you have ever your relatives, your friends, uh, you've gotta get this word out. We gotta do a lot better getting the word out than we did for tonight. But you'll be able to say to them, this is what it was like in Vietnam. And uh, so Bruce is going to bring that over. He's going to give a, give a talk. And uh, we also are fortunate to have from Pennsylvania, Chris Brady. Chris Brady's father, who's, who's a survivor of Firebase Ship Corps too, though, he has written the definitive book of that story. And uh, he's going to be here as a speaker. So 
uh, it's going to be another, another uh, great uh, uh, lecture and great evening uh, devoted to Vietnam. Before I go further, I, I want to uh, introduce some, a couple people here that uh, I'd like to, I've already mentioned Joe Byerly. Joe Byerly is a Vietnam veteran. Uh, he's come over from uh, his home in Howell now. The name Joe Byerly I think is familiar to you. His father's exhibit is here in the museum and, and Joe is known as Joe II. Joe the second, so uh, he goes by Joe too. I want to introduce Lupe Alvear and Dennis Cobbler, two of the uh, real uh, stalwart uh, Vietnam veterans uh, here in, uh, in our area and for all the work uh, uh, that they've done. Uh, tonight's speaker, uh, I first met, uh, he doesn't remember this, but it was just a brief meeting, oh, maybe, I don't know how many years ago, the, the state uh, uh, airborne, 101st Airborne uh, Association had a, had a reunion here in Muskegon and they held it down at the LST. A lot of it was down at the LST and uh, here at one of the hotels. And, and uh, John uh, Cologne uh, was there and, and I heard this story, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, this fellow said that he was in a body bag and he survived and, you know, just, at, you, know, you know, sometimes war stories kind of, you know, get out there. And I really wondered, boy, would, would that be true? And then I, I of course, I, I double checked with Joe. Joe's never told a toss story. And uh, so he, uh, and he verified uh, this is actually true, that this happened. So uh, uh, the, as a result of it, it's always stuck in the back of my mind. So uh, last Memorial Day, I'm watching CBS News, uh, the morning show of CBS News. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of sitting there. And they say, well, here's this man from Hell, Michigan. And he is truly from Hell, Michigan. He is the owner and mayor of Hell, Michigan, named John Cologne. And here's his story. And here's his story. And we're going to see it here in a minute, the, the clip, uh, about him. And uh, so uh, that led to Joe getting me John's contact information and then passing it on to others. And anyway, that's how he's here. John is here tonight. John, you're going to find out, is a very quiet, humble man. But there, I want to. I want to talk about this. He, he'll talk about it. But what happened was they were they were ambushed, and the the unit was under heavy heavy fire, and John was a sergeant uh, and a unit commander uh, in the 101st Airborne. In fact, he was in the same same unit that Joe Byerly Sr. was in, in 101st Airborne in World War II. So there's really kind of a connection, the 506th. Uh, so let me, I just want to read, though, a couple things uh, uh, that are on the internet from, from uh, John's uh, uh, fellow uh, uh, soldiers who were there and who have been at reunions and commented on him. Uh, this is from Jerry Berry, who was the combat photographer and reporter for, reporter for the Curahee Battalion. I recall Sergeant Cologne's concern for his men. His men had the highest respect for him and his leadership. Sergeant Cologne would often remind his men of the battalion order not to destroy or injure anything or anyone that did not need to be. He never lost sight of the fact that our unit's mission in Vietnam was to find, fix, and destroy the enemy in its means to carry on the war against the people uh, and the enemy in its means to carry on the war against the people of South Vietnam. His, uh, 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 another, um, a friend was uh, another uh, soldier with him in his unit was Gary Purcell, and he's, uh, he commented, John, this is after John was wound, wounded, John was dragged from the rice paddy, bleeding profusely from his wounds. I held his head in my lap, and in my heart I knew he was dying. But I kept telling him he was going to make it uh, to just, and to just hold on until the dust off got there, the dust off being the, the helicopter. So um, with that, uh, we're, I am, am, couldn't be more proud to, to introduce uh, uh, John Cologne, and I think, John, you, you said you want to, we'll start with your clip after you've spoken a little bit, and we'll come on up first and greet everybody, and then we'll, because Wes is the only one who knows which button to push, so. Yeah. 